Hey there everyone, uh, my name is Aaron and I've decided to become a racing driver. So welcome to my channel, where I'll be sharing the thrills, the near misses, the spills, the inevitable repair bills, and I'll be stopping by for your chat as I share my racing journey. Uh, and so welcome to my new channel, The uh, the Inner Racer, and thanks for watching up to this point. Now, uh, this is the very first YouTube video that I've ever done. In terms of why I wanted to start up the channel, um, I'm just what I consider to be a regular guy. Um, as of at the time of filming this in May 2022, I'm 35 years old. Um, you know, I'm just a regular person who's lived a conventional life up to this point, I would say. You know, I don't really have any kind of, um, you know, massive, massive talents. However, uh, racing cars, uh, motorsports um, are, are massive passions of mine. And, um, yeah, racing cars is something that's been on my kind of list of goals and bucket list, as you might, as you might say, for a, a number of years now. Um, um, but... Uh, over the past few months I've just had kind of a voice, kind of an inner voice that's just been telling me to, to, to pursue that dream at this moment in time. Um, and so a few months ago I made the, the, the big decision uh, to embark on a season of car racing uh, this year for, for 2022. Um, you know, it's not something that you know, I, I've considered lightly because you know, it's a big commitment in terms of, of time um uh, in terms of resources uh but hey you know uh life, life short and with everything that's been going on in the, in the world over the past couple of years we just don't know what's around the corner so i just decided to, to make my dreams and my goal a reality and start racing this year so over the course of this year um i mean the main the main purpose of my channel is to really share my racing journey with you um as it's a journey into the unknown for me, um, and I'm sure that there are you know many guys and girls out there like me who consider themselves just to be regular people who don't who don't come from motorsport families like me, um, who are thinking of embarking on a similar journey, um, uh, but don't know where to start. Or you know you might just be a motorsport fan in general and interested in cars and want to see what motor racing is about. So hopefully during the course of this year. I'll be able to share some content that's uh, that's of interest to you. Um, now, I'm aware that I've been uh, talking for a while, and as the year goes on, I will be doing a few more deep dives into kind of my approach to racing, my motivations, uh, and what I love. Uh, but as I'm film filming this, I actually finished my very first racing weekend uh, at Brands Hatch in the UK uh, about three weeks ago now, and I've got plenty of racing action and content to, to share with you. Um, so, that's, uh, that's, as I said, what I want to share. But before we do that, um, I just want to go into a bit more detail about the championship I'm racing in, in here in the UK and, and the car that I'll, racing, that I'll be racing, sorry. Uh, so yeah, here they are. And hope you enjoy this first episode. So here's some more information on the championship that I'm racing in this year, the Caterham Rosebolt Championship. Now this championship is second on the rung of Caterham's UK racing ladder, first rung being the Caterham Academy for completely new drivers. Now the Caterham Rosebolt Championship is the championship that uh, the Caterham Academy drivers graduate to, plus it's open to novice drivers like myself who have got no uh, car circuit racing experience but might have some racing experience previously. So in my case I've raced in an arrive and drive karting championship for a couple of years. There are seven race weekends across the UK and we are visiting circuits such as Brands Hatch which we'll be covering later on in this video and Silverstone Grand Prix circuit which I'm very very much looking forward to. And the race format is one qualifying session which lasts for 15 minutes uh, that determines uh, the grid for race one on Saturday. Then the results of race one on Saturday determine the grid for race two on Sunday. So 
So here's a quick overview of my Caterham 7 Roseport racing car, which is actually completely road legal. It's got a Ford Sigma 1.6 litre engine, pumping out a maximum power output of 125 brake horsepower with a 150 mile an hour top speed. Now that might not seem like the fastest racing car on earth, however, what we need to take into account is it's got a minimum racing weight of 630 kilograms uh, with driver, which means it's got an excellent power to weight ratio. So good in fact that on certain circuits where power isn't so dependent, it can lap them faster than what we consider to be premium supercars such as certain Ferraris, Lamborghinis and high power Porsches. The drivetrain is, consists of a 5-speed manual gearbox taken from a Mazda MX-5 and the spec tyre for the series is the Avon ZZS which can be used in both dry and wet conditions. However, drivers in the series tend to have at least two sets of tyres, one to be used in dry and one for the wet. In terms, of, in terms of setup changes that can be made, uh, drivers can change tyre pressures at will uh, and also there are changeable front anti-roll bars to change the front stiffness and adjustable and rear anti-roll bars to change the uh, stiffness of the rear as well to alter the balance of the car in conjunction with the two. Now I must uh, state that race team uh, support isn't allowed in this series. Drivers have to do all setup changes uh, and work on the car by themselves. So now, no doubt during the course of the season, you'll be seeing me getting my hands dirty at some point. Now here's the fun part. It's how my first ever racing weekend at Brands Hatch went. As a reminder, the format is qualifying followed by two races. First of all, I actually had to uh, get myself into the car. Now I'm pretty tall, uh, six foot two, so getting in actually takes a fair bit of time. I had to get a custom seat made to ensure that I'm within the regulations. And in all honesty, I do need to allocate maybe 10 or 15 minutes to get it, get in strapped up, get my helmet on, uh, wrist straps and uh, all my gear. And uh, as I said, I'll do another video later on in the season uh, about, uh, about the car and all the equipment I need. But to qualifying, so um, the 15 minute qualifying was truncated by a couple of red flags. Um, we were first session in the morning, uh, 9 a.m. It was bright, but the track was slightly damp. Um, so this is my fastest lap in the qualifying session. Um, there are only a few minutes to go. So let's take a ride to see how we get on. So coming into Paddock Kill Bend here, um, you can already see that there's a car in front of me. And to be fair, he's actually a very, very, very quick, uh, quick driver. Um, and going to Druids here, I saw that he'd uh, got onto the onto the wet patch, and that gave me a bit of information about where there might be a bit more grip. Um, coming into Graham Hill Bend here. Um, I probably braked a bit earlier than I wanted to, uh, simply because whenever there's a, a driver in front, you don't know where their braking point is going to be, so you always brake that a little bit earlier uh, to take into take that take that into account. So going into 30s, I decided to take a bit more of a chance because I knew I'd lost a bit of time, um, and I think I took that pretty well. So I had a, had a bit of a moment in the middle of the corner there, and powering out of this final quarter, um, I got a bit of a slipstream from the driver in front, which definitely helped uh, with my uh, with my lap time. And happy to say that I qualified 8th on the grid out of 34, which I was really, really, really happy with. Way beyond my expectations. Expectations. I was actually on provisional pole for about a minute, I saw in the time afterwards. Um, tried to improve my, my time, but I couldn't due to traffic. I mean, coming to the final corner there, you see my line wasn't optimal. I just made a bit of a half move. And then going to race 1, um, it was my first ever racing start, which wasn't ideal. I'd never actually practiced a racing start in the car before. So I've got a bit of wheel spin. And as you can see, I got overtaken by uh, a couple of drivers uh, there, but um, still not a bad start. I can't even explain the feeling of being on the grid or in the race with all, all these cars. It's, I mean, racing with by yourself or driving on circuit by yourself is one thing, but all these cars is another. So coming into Druids on the first lap, the very first corner, as you see, there was a bit of debris that flew into my car here, just hit my roll bar. So much was going on, I didn't actually notice during the race, but uh, I only noticed it when looking at the video back. So at this part of the race, I mean, my main thoughts were just um, <laughs> trying to get through. I mean, 33, 34 cars is a massive number for such a small track like Brands Hatch Indy. So um, I was just, yeah, trying to make sure I could get through the first lap with no incidents and you know, keeping my nose clean as it were and uh, I think I did that to some extent um, and then yeah, coming out of the final corner here um, it's my first experience of gaining a, a slipstream in a 
racing uh, racing situation. Um, so coming up to Paddock Hill, almost pulled alongside the two cars in front, but three into one doesn't really go, especially when I was that far behind and decided to uh, yeah just err on the side of caution there. If you look at my rear view camera, see another driver coming to uh, see if he could get through that gap, but he couldn't. And then uh, coming through into Graham Hill on this uh, second part of, or second lap, the driver in front got a bit sideways. Unfortunately, I wasn't able to capitalise because he was very good at defending right away, which is, you know, good, good driving. Um, and then, uh, yeah, through through thirties again. And yeah, trying to get the best exit possible onto the third lap. And then coming onto the third lap into Druids here, we saw a, a, another double wave yellow in that car. I don't know if you can see there because my footage was pretty grainy, but his rear end was completely dented in. And there was another incident here uh, that allowed me to uh, make up the two places that, uh, that I lost off, off the grid. So up until then, I was riding in eighth place until disaster. My car cut out for a couple of, literally a couple of seconds, but then that allowed two cars behind me to just pass me on, the, on either side. If you're an F1 racing fan, then you'll know that, that move, those moves are reminiscent of uh, Michael Schumacher and Mika Hakkinen going around with the outside of Ricardo Zonta at the Belgian Grand Prix in 2000. And so after that, I, I gave chase again. I think I was about 10th at this point. Um, and then was just trying to make those places back up after my car cut out. Um, hopefully I'll have that uh, issue sorted for, uh, for Snetterton. Then coming up to uh, Druids, we, have got the safety car. Oh, we, got into the safety we found that uh, the safety car had come out. So it wasn't at Druids, it was actually a bit further on during the lap. And then after that, the race was red flagged. And that was all due down to the, uh, the, uh, the incident that, uh, that occurred at, at Druids there. So the race has stopped by this point. So we all had to reform on the grid. So lots of you know drama, not so much drama, but a few minor incidents in the race up until this point. Um, and then, yeah, we had to re-grid re up, re up for the race restart. And for the race restart, I think I got an okay start, a bit better than, uh, than at the beginning of the first race. Uh, but then coming to the first corner here, uh, another driver spun in front of me. I had nowhere to go but the gravel. Um, and then that was my race over. As you can see there, um, I got a bit of a hit on the, on the right side of my car as well. Um, and yeah. I mean, I didn't really... What was I thinking at that point? Expletive. <laughs> but as you can see, uh, coming into the gravel here, yeah. As I came to a stop, I just got a whole face load of gravel into the car. It's an open top car, so the inside was just caked. And I mean, apart from the expletive, my initial thought was what damage had been done to the car because I felt a you know, fairly significant impact on, on the driver's side there. Um, and so there, after that, I was just, just waiting for the marshals. Uh, I was instructed to stay in the car and uh, my, friend, my friend with his JCB there was very enthusiastic and uh, eventually, yeah, I was, I was asked to, to get out, out of the car and watch the remainder of the race from, from the sidelines, side just inspecting the damage there and uh, yeah, just getting, getting off the track a, a, as quick as possible. And I was actually quite anxious because my car was left there for the for the rest of the race. Um, but yeah, here's my car after the race. As you can see, the right rear bumper was was dented slightly, as well as the uh, exhaust silencer, um, which wasn't ideal. I mean, the car was drivable, but it's still the silencer at least was damage that needed to be uh, affixed. I could leave the bumper as it was with some gaffer tape, and there. There's my video of, the, of the getting a new silencer there, literally a five minute job and yeah, props to catering for fixing that for me. And yeah, here's a, a little quick bit of the gravel in my car after the race. Um, I tried to get get rid of most of it, uh, but I still had a bit in the passenger footwell, footwell there as well as uh, the, the driver's seat. And that takes us to the start of race two on Sunday, the next day. Um, so I got, yeah, a bit of a better start but still not ideal um, but I think it was a blessing in disguise that I didn't get a great start because it meant that I wasn't involved in the incident we saw up ahead um, and by this point I mean uh, 
yeah <laughs> it's, it's one of many incidents that, that occurred during the race but yeah that incident resulted in another, another red flag another race uh, restart uh, which you'll see here and I actually got uh, an okay okay start by this point in time my main objective was just to finish the race so uh, the race had been shortened to 15 minutes uh, by by this point so we have 15 minutes and um, yeah I started P26 again I believe for this uh, second uh, second attempt at starting race two um, and as you can see yeah, I was being a bit conservative and tentative going into uh, the first uh, first corner and so yeah as I say going to Graham Hill I think you can hear the gravel in the car a little bit from uh, from from before uh, from 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 race one from the, that was left in race one and uh, yeah I was just I was just making my way up the field and as you can see here coming out the final corner I was uh, making uh, making my move getting in the slip stream and making a move into Paddock Hill bend there which I was very very happy with my first kind of proper overtake of, of the race and yeah getting into into some clear air there and trying to make further progress another incident at, at Druids another another yellow flag seems to be quite a lot of quite a lot of action there and then later on in the lap yeah coming across this car that was was damaged in the first corner incident from the first attempt at the race start getting getting by there and once I got past this driver I could see the gaggle of cars up front um, and it was just my main mission in clear air to try and catch them as, as soon as possible um, because I had some clear air I was able to take paddock uh, more quickly than previous laps not the optimal line but as you can see because they were all fighting with, with one another I could uh, yeah catch them pretty 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 quickly um, and I just wanted to get my head down and, and see where I could make some moves and uh, yeah make some some risk-free passes really uh, and yeah coming down the straight here just trying to optimize my um, my line through 30s and yeah optimize my exit out of that final corner to try and get in the uh, in the, in the slipstream there Yeah, so coming down the pit straight, yeah, getting in the slipstream, tried to see if a move was on, but as you can see, there are quite a few cars there, so so it wasn't. And then yeah, just trying to get the best exit possible out of uh, out of Paddock Hill to see where I could uh, make a move out of Druids because uh, the dri this driver up front had covered the inside line pretty well. And then. <laughs> And uh, yes, can you believe that I ran out, of, ran out of space on my SD card? So um, I only got to record the first few minutes of that race, which is such a shame because it was so good. Um, so I started that race 26th and by the end I came 18th and finished, which is, which is amazing. Um, yeah, so for the, for the final few laps uh, of that race, I made a few more overtakes and um, I think for the last two to five laps, I was engaged in a you know amazing wheel-to-wheel -wheel battle uh, with one of uh, the racers who is you know considered to be one of the one of the fastest and best in the series, and I held my own, and um, and uh, yeah, ended up finishing 18th. Not only that, but on the final lap of the race, I completed my fastest fastest ever lap of the Brands Hatch Indy Circuit as well, which I was really 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 happy with. So whilst, you know, my race results weren't what I was hoping for, so with the DNF in race one and finishing P18 in, in race two, um, you know, I just learned so much during the weekend. Um, I have to say it was such a roller coaster from, you know, go out, going out and qualifying and experiencing, uh, you know, two red flags and then, you know, not having long to, to put in a lap. Um, qualifying eighth, which is you know much much higher than I than I expected and anticipated. Um, doing a race start for the first time, which you know I never practiced. A bit of an oversight of mine. Um, you know, enduring you know a safety car in the race, red flags in that first race. Um, you know, enduring that DNF in the first race, ending up in the gravel. 
you know, needing to get repairs to my car, um, yeah, just learning all the processes and procedures around the weekend. Um, so yeah, just finishing finishing that second race was a massive, massive deal for me. And um, yeah, I'm not gonna lie, I probably did share a tiny bit of a tear in my um, in my helmet as I parked up in Park Ferme. I mean, I blame it on a bit of brake dust, um, but hey, I'm in, I'm in tune with my emotions. I was very, 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 very happy. Um, and yeah, because it was such a great experience, I'm just really, 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 really looking forward to, to round two at Snetterton. Um, and uh, you can be rest assured that I'll be documenting that particular race uh, like I have this one. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's see what's in store for that one. Uh, but thanks for watching so far. Um, I mean, if you've liked what you've seen, please keep, please give me a like and uh, hit that subscribe button. Um, and also just leave me a few comments about uh, what you think of the video, uh, what kind of content you think you wanna see or you'd like to see as the year goes on and uh, any improvements uh, that you think I could make as well because I'm open to, uh, open to feedback. Uh, but with that, yeah, thanks again and I will see you next time.